Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're looking devotionally in 1 Samuel chapter 2 this morning, and we're going to follow out from verse 18 through verse 26. And before we read it, remember, we're contrasting. Yesterday morning, we saw Hophni and Phinehas, the way things were working under their priesthood. They're corrupt. They do not know the Lord. They are the so kind of the main priests, but their priesthood is very much corrupt, and everybody is abhorring the offering. They don't even really want to go. Anyway, let's pick it up right at the next verse. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen ephod. Morefore, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father, because the Lord desired to kill them. And the child Samuel grew in stature and favor both with the Lord and men." Okay, so this is a grim section, right? We, we are contrasting a young Samuel who was lent to the Lord. God answered Hannah's prayer, and she gave him to the Lord to, to help within the priesthood. Hophni and Phinehas and the two sons of Eli, they're just corrupt. And now we begin to see how corrupt they are. You, to go to the sanctuary was to put yourself at great risk if you were a female. Just terrible. This is, this is the height of immorality. You didn't think that things were ever this bad, but... Here they are. They're pretty bad. So here we have Eli. He's he's kind of aged, so you understand that. That's sort of an inhibition to him, but he, he tells his sons, you can't do this. You just can't do this. Somebody else could forgive you, but if you're going to sin against God, how do you think that's going to work out? They're not buying it. They're not paying any attention. They're just kind of doing whatever. And notice then what it says there, why they didn't heed the voice. It's kind of an interesting spot here. Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. Verse 25, does God really want to kill somebody? So we have an issue that's called the unpardonable sin. The Bible talks about it here and there. If we completely separate ourselves from God and we reject all of his appeals to repent, we could commit the unpardonable sin. We could come to a place where basically it's not that God doesn't want to save us. It's that we become incapable of being saved. It's kind of like a hearing issue. Sometimes as you age, you begin to get trouble with your eyes or you begin to lose your vision or you begin to lose your hearing and you can come to a place where you can't hardly see or you can't hardly hear. This is kind of also a way it seems that the conscience works. So if, if God appeals to us and appeals to us and appeals to us and we just keep resisting and going our own way and doing our own stuff, that voice, that still small voice in our conscience is going to get quieter and quieter. It's going to become harder and harder to hear and we'll come to a place where we really can't receive any guidance from God because we have seared our conscience. So you can come to a place where it's not that God wouldn't call you, but you're coming to a place where you can't hear him, and then you're left to your own devices. We don't want that. They didn't heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. Perhaps these sons had already become so corrupt, they've already grieved the Holy Spirit. Once they've grieved him, what can God do? Very sad, very sad. We don't want to ever be in that kind of a place. Let's make sure we we stretch our ears out just as wide as we can, our spiritual ears, so that we can hear what the Lord is saying to us. So Samuel's growing. He's growing spiritually. He's listening for God. We'll see that very soon. But Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they're not growing at all. They're headed for destruction. Hey, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, this is a sad, sad state of the priesthood, totally corrupt. And yet, Lord, you are, and yet, Lord, you are providing for yourself faithful priests. Samuel seems to be on the way. Oh, Lord, help our ears to be open to you. Help us to be turning to you and following as you lead us. Lead us into the kind of deep repentance not to be repentant of. Help us, Lord, to grow spiritually. We thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So, God be with you today.